I might be a straight guy, but Henry Cavill, holy shit. This is my name is Adaris and welcome to the view of Mission Impossible Fallout. So Mission Impossible Fallout is the sixth Mission Impossible movie. Holy shit! There was a time where we only had two. I mean, there was a time we only had one, but for the longest time we only had two. Then we had three. Then we had nothing. Then four. Jesus. So Fallout begins with that Ethan Hunt and his gang is trying to get back some plutonium. Or is it uranium? I think it's plutonium. That's been stolen by the leftovers of the Syndicate, which was the bad organization in the former movie. Ethan Hunt then makes a hard choice and ends up losing the plutonium. So now he and his team need to get that back before the bad guys create some nuclear bombs and bomb some shit. We don't want them to bomb some shit, but... They want to bomb some shit, so we need to get the plutonium back before they do that. And since that Ethan Hunt has kind of fucked up, they put on Henry Cavill's character to not supervise him, but um, make sure that Ethan Hunt does what the government sees to be the right thing. Otherwise, he's gonna take him down. So mm, that's pretty much the movie. So what do I like about the Mission Impossible 6? Well, first of all, a lot of the action sequences is beautifully shot. You can follow along everything. They make sure that the viewer know the geography of the scene, where everything is placed, how they interact with each other, and the dangers of the scene. There's no shaggy cam, there's no quick cuts. Well, there's some quick cuts, but they're not that many. Most of the time, it's a wide shot or a really well-placed close-up that makes sure that you miss nothing of the action. I like that. Then there is the cast. The cast is pretty veteran-ish by now, especially talking about Mission Impossible standards. You have Tom Cruise, who is just utterly insane. I mean, the man is, what, 55, 56 years old, and he still does all those crazy stunts. I mean... Dude, what are you made of? An Elementium? You have Simon Pegg, and you have a lot of other actors who have been in former Mission Impossible movies who are reprising their roles. And then you have the addition of Henry Cavill. And Henry Cavill is kind of a two-edged sword. I can't go into details why, because that will ruin the movie. But I will say this, his role in the movie is not as opposing as I would have wanted him to be, because the man is big and when he wants to he can be extremely intimidating and also the character is is quite fluent so you don't really have a definitive character for him it is just in a gray area and he floats around in there so you don't really know where you have him that can be a good thing when you want a mystery character but at the end of the movie you kind of want to know who was the guy in any stretch of fashion and lastly i will say that the plot is the most simple plot in any Mission Impossible movie ever. This is a good thing and a bad thing, but mostly it's a good thing because it keeps things simple, it makes them easy to follow and leaves room for some interesting stunts and action and character development with Ethan Hunt. Yes, we will finally get a glimpse of who Ethan Hunt is because otherwise we don't know besides looks like Tom Cruise, acts like Tom Cruise. Is it an allegory for Tom Cruise? Maybe. But on the other hand, it also means that this movie has no surprises whatsoever. It doesn't even have this crazy break-in thing that the most Mission Impossible movies has. We had the first one with the CIA headquarters. We have the second one with that biological tower thing that made the virus. We have the third one where they need to go into the Vatican. We have the fourth one where they need to do that uh, Butch Khalifa thing. We have the fifth one where he need to dive and get those things. Oh, in the fourth one we also have Kremlin. And then in this one we have nothing. They don't break into anything. It's it's kind of a bummer, really, because I really wanted a suspenseful scene. That's 
Now that I think about it, this movie doesn't really have a suspenseful scene besides the last act. That, however, is extremely suspenseful. Also, this movie doesn't really need to exist plot-wise. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. It does plays it safe. It knows what works and it just uses what it knows works. But that does make the movie irrelevant. If you bring nothing new or interesting to the table to your franchise, then why bring it? Which is why I think they focused a bit more on the relationship between Ethan Hunt and though he holds dear. We all know that Ethan Hunt is a good guy, but why does he make the choices that he make? We get a glimpse of it, which is nice, but making a whole movie just to get a glimpse of that is kind of pointless, unfortunately. Also, the villain is not utilized at all. Not even close. The villain is just there, and the villain is not even really doing anything. Things just happens to the villain, and then at the end, the villain finally does something, and then the movie ends with an anticlimactic final battle. And people have seen the movie might go, what do you mean anticlimactic? I know there is an awesome scene through these mountains, which is awesome, but when they are at it at the end, fighting each other, not really that much interesting happening. There's not a lot to say about this movie, because this movie just played safe. It is entertaining, I enjoyed every freaking minute of it, but I did want more interesting and suspenseful action set pieces, but that might be because I know what came before it in this franchise. I know what they can do with this franchise. That being said, this is not a bad movie. This is a great movie. Almost every character will have a chance to shine. You will see some old characters you haven't seen in a long time. There will be a lot more focus on character interactions. And you have the mo one of the most awesome skydiving scene and helicopter scenes ever put on film. Just, just throwing it out there. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the last Mission Impossible movie. It kind of tries to be at the end. So maybe, but I don't know. Do I want any more Mission Impossible movies? That's a good question. If they bring something new to the table, then yes, I would like more. If they do what they did in this movie, then no, I don't want any more. That doesn't make sense. So what do we get with this move? Well, you get an extremely streamlined plot. There is no twist and turns throughout this movie. Everything is laid down for you. The movie then utilize this simple plot to make some awesome action set pieces and to make room for character development and interaction. This movie could, however, have benefited from who is the bad guy, because we know that someone is doing things behind the scenes. Well, if if you have seen the trailers, then you know what's going to happen. But if you haven't, it would have been nice to have made them make a more who did the thing and make it into a thriller in that direction. But Missed opportunity, I guess. You will have some great visuals. There are some stunning shots in this movie. You will have great music because the soundtrack is, as always, awesome. We will probably have the best Ethan Hunt iteration to date because you get more of an idea of who this man is and what makes him go out of the bed in the morning. And you will have an extremely suspenseful climax to this movie. But, fortunately, you will have a weak villain. You will have an abrupt ending, if you ask me. You have a movie that doesn't really bring anything new or interesting to the table. I mean, for the sixth time, Ethan Hunt is gonna be disavowed and his team's gonna be disavowed, so nothing new there. You will have no heist scene or something along those lines, which the movie is known for. It makes one of the best heist sequences. All of the movie does. And here you have nothing. Nothing at all. And I know it might be because they need to find some plutonium, but still. I would also have liked if the movie forced Ethan Hunt to make more difficult choices, like he did in the first movie, his choice, who set the whole movie in motion. Let that be a theme. Bring him to the edge. Almost make Ethan Hunt break. That would be awesome and interesting to see, because we have never seen him like that. Well, we have seen him like that once, which was at the end of the third movie where he thought his wife was killed. But besides that, I want something like that. If you want to make the plot simple, then at least do something interesting with the characters in that aspect. I know they did, but that would have benefited the movie extremely. Now, after all is said and done, this movie is worth a viewing because it's Mission Impossible and it's not Mission Impossible 2. So not your move thing, no doves, no slow motion, no stupid shit. I will say that Mission Impossible 
Fallout is worth watching in cinema, entertainment guaranteed. But seriously man, Cruise is like 56. You can keep this up. At some point, someone needs to do his stunts. He's not taking a chance. But anyway, have you seen Mission Impossible Fallout? What did you think about it? And what is your favorite Mission Impossible movie? I think for me personally, it will be the fourth one, closely followed by the first one, because the first one is just iconic. And that CIA scene, Jesus. Whatever you think, comment below and bring your thoughts. And as always, until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome. Bye. Do 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 do